Campbell, friends for uh, Tor Bay and Southwark Coastal. My South West Bedfordshire constituency is about as far from the sea as you can get. So why does this debate matter to my constituents and why am I here uh, today? And the reason is that the, the oceans produce half of the oxygen that we breathe. And I think it's just worth almost pausing just for a moment after that sentence, given how uh, important oxygen is to all of us and human life on the planet. They are the world's largest carbon sink. They've already absorbed 30% of all our carbon dioxide and 90% of the excess heat caused by human activities. Three billion people around the planet rely on the ocean for food and livelihoods. That is a huge number if you think of global economy and what would happen to those people if those oceans weren't able to carry on supplying that food and their livelihoods. So protecting the high seas from industrial overfishing and mining can lock away carbon whilst replenishing those all-important fish populations. And we should also remember the potential of the blue economy and the whole pharmaceutical area. We know that fungi in the twilight zone of the oceans um, are highly likely to be a new and really important source of penicillin-like drugs for the future to help us deal with some of the terrible health issues that we face. So what is the problem that the Global Ocean Treaty is trying to solve? We know, sadly, that two-thirds of the high seas are already experiencing pollution, overfishing, and the impacts of climate change. A third of global fish stocks are already overfished, and over a third of marine mammals like sharks, which are an incredibly important apex predator. Many of us think sharks would be feared, but actually we now know from marine biologists they have a very important role in the whole ecosystem of marine life. So over a third of marine mammals like sharks are under threat of extinction. And also there is the whole issue of plastic, which I think is integrally bound up with this issue, which several other honourable members have already mentioned. The United Nations tells us they believe some 14 million tonnes of plastic end up in the ocean every year. And we all do our bit as litter picks or whatever, as the honourable member for Orkley was saying, and you know, I'm sure we've all tried to do a pathetically small amount on holiday, uh, but we, we, we've all got to do what we can. But that is an absolutely huge amount. We also know that in the first decade of the 21st century, more plastic was created than in the whole of history up to that point. The production of plastic is on an accelerating curve, and unless we do something about it, we are not going to get on top of this uh, issue. Um, a quarter of all fish sold in Californian fish markets have plastic in their gut, according to some recent studies. And there are four countries which dump more plastic in the sea uh, than all other countries combined. China, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam are those four, with China being by far the worst. The Yangtze River pours more plastic into the ocean than any other river on the planet. And this cannot go on. And I say to our friends in those countries, with a degree of humility, because our own record has not been perfect in the past, that this is an issue they need to get on top of. So what needs to be done to address these really, really serious problems? The UN High Seas Treaty was finalised in 2023, and I pay tribute to my right honourable friend for Suffolk Coastal and her role in that. It took 20 years of negotiation. That is a very long time. I'm proud that the UK was a member of the so-called High Ambition Coalition to get it done, and I join what every other member has said um, about trying to get it ratified as quickly as possible to provide that really important uh, lead on this issue. Uh, the UK Blue Belt uh, around UK overseas territories has protected an area of ocean larger than the size of India, and that is also to be welcomed as well. And around England, closer to home, we have three highly protected uh, marine areas um, as well, which are, are very much to be welcomed. So we need to ratify this treaty as quickly as possible. We also need the closely related UN Global Plastics Treaty, to be created and finalised by the end of 2024. And I'm pleased as well that the UK is also a member of the High Ambition Coalition to End Plastic Pollution, because these two issues are integrally connected.